Hi, I'm Brandon from Tilda. In this tutorial, we are going to make a one-page website in less than 40 minutes without coding. This is what the website we are going to create looks like, a nice landing page designed for a conference. Thanks to its universal structure, you can build websites for any type of events out of this template. It will perfectly fit a workshop landing page, for example. Let me show you how to create this page from scratch. First, I need to sign up for Tilda. It's pretty fast. All you need is to type in your name, email, and password, then press the sign up button. Once I've signed up, a pop-up appears suggesting to create a new website. Let me name my project and hit the create button. Here we are into the Tilda dashboard. My first project was created, but there are no pages yet. Before I create a new page, let me take an opportunity and activate a two-week Tilda personal plan. This is a free trial that will allow me to use all the features available on paid plans for two weeks. Okay, let me go back to Dashboard and create my first page. Here, I select a blank page to create a website from scratch. This is what Tilda Editor looks like. All the pages on Tilda are made out of blocks. Down here, the most used blocks are located, providing you with the instant access to them. By clicking More Blocks, you open a blocks library. All the blocks are divided by categories. Here you can browse the long list of different block types. Let's have a look at the cover category. You see how different your cover may be. Its color, design, typography vary quite a lot. Same is true for other categories like title, text, image, gallery, etc. For my first screen, I need a cover containing a title, a subtitle, and a call to action button. I think this one will do just fine. Let me first tell a bit more on how blocks function. Each block on Tilda is highly customizable. There are two tabs allowing you to modify a block. The first one is called Content. Let's open it and see what's inside. Here I can edit texts, upload images, alter a button title, assign a link to the button, etc. In short, the Content panel enables you to edit the content of the block. The Settings tab lets you modify the look of the block. You can decide whether or not the block will be fixed on scroll, set the height of the cover, choose if filters will be applied, change the topography, add the background video, and more. On the right side, there is a small control panel with several buttons. You can make a copy of your block, just like that. The arrows allow you to move the block above or below other blocks. You can hide the block, which means that it will not appear in the preview nor on the published web page. But the block is not deleted. You can activate it anytime and make it a part of your web page. In case you don't need the block anymore, use this button to delete it. There are some other commands in the drop down menu over here. Let's get back to our cover. I need to customize its content. In other words, I want to edit the texts and the image. I prepared all the images and texts for this website in advance. First, I am going to change the background image. All I need to do is to drag and drop the picture from my files to the cover, just like that. To modify the text, I first copy the phrase from my notes, Command C or Control C. Then I double click the text on the cover and paste the phrase I just copied using Command V or Control V. To edit the button titles, I go to the content panel. I need only one button here, so I modify its title. Then I remove the title of the second button to delete it from the block, and I save the changes. I still need to work on the design of my cover, so I open the settings panel. The official colors of the conference are blue and yellow, and I am going to set a bluish filter for my cover. I created the blue-violet gradient, now I save it, and you see how the cover has changed. As you might have noticed, if I click the Save button, the Settings panel remains open while the changes are applied. If instead I hit Save and Close, the panel gets hidden. I would also like to add a down arrow to my cover as a scroll down hint. Alright, the cover is done. 
The next section will allow visitors to learn more about the conference, its format, and provide some useful info. I'll insert some text and nice photos taken at last year's conference, for example. This will give a clear idea about how the event is organized. First, I need a title. Let's select one. I also want to add some photos, so I go to the Gallery category and pick a block, say this one, containing three pictures. Let me customize the content. I edit the text. Our section is built out of these two blocks, a text block and a gallery block. There is an easier way to create the same thing. You can use a complex block or a section block, as we call it that comes with different elements needed for various scenarios. Check the About category. You can see plenty of section blocks. The key benefit here is that each section consists of several specific elements that you may need while describing your product or event, like in my case. Let's add this section block, for example. As you can see, all the elements are already there. A title, a description, and a photo gallery, all in one single block. Let me delete the two separate blocks we have created previously, as it is way easier to use the section block. Each section comes with a preset layout, carefully created by professional designers. You don't need to worry about the paddings or font size. The block looks nicely by default. All you need to do is customize the content. I edit the text and add the images to the gallery. We have just finished the About the Conference section of the website. As a next step, I would like to share the benefits of this event. I prepared them in advance. By the way, to add a new block to the website, click the plus icon under the previous block. It opens the blocks library. I am looking for a block containing large numbers and a background image. The Features category is just what I need. This block seems the right one. I won't need any title nor description, so I just delete them. Next, I customize my content. There will be 32 speakers at the conference. The event will last for 21 hours in total. And there are about 800 attendees expected to take part in the conference. Alright, the content is ready. Now let me make some changes in the look of this block, which seems to me a bit too large. I open the settings panel and modify the height of the block. It is measured in percentage. Let me make it shorter and put 75 VH. It means that the block will take 75% of my browser height. Next, I want to change the background image and its filter. First, I pick the filter colors. I will use the same shade of blue as in the cover. I want the filter to be quite dense. Done. Now I just drag and drop the background picture. All right, we have now another section of the website ready. Let's move ahead and introduce the speakers of the conference. In the blocks library, I go to the team category. It includes section blocks that are designed to present people, their expertise, their profile photos can be added as well. I'll go for this one. Let me tell you a bit more about this type of blocks. Let's open the content panel and click the items tab. Each item includes a photo of a person, his or her name, a short info, and some additional text. We have four items like that in the block we just added. Let's go back and take a look at the block again. As you can see, each item represents a person. There are four items now. What if I need to include six speakers? I open the content panel, go to the items tab, and here I have two options. I can either add another item or duplicate one of those already created. Let's see how the block reacts if I duplicate the last item. A new item appeared on a second row. It is really easy as you don't need to add another block or think about the layout. To expand the amount of your content, you just need to add another item and customize it. The design will adapt automatically. Now, let me modify the block. First of all, I want to have only three speakers per row, not four. To do this, I open the Settings panel and change the number of items in a row in this small drop-down menu. Done. OK, then I customize the content.
Oh, I guess I'm missing an item. Let me add it in the content panel. I can also modify the items here in the content panel, as well as right on the page. I save all the changes and the block is done. The next section of my website is a conference schedule. It's important to announce the timing of each talk, discussion, and break in advance so that the attendees will effectively plan their time. There is a timetable category in the blocks library. What is left for you is to choose the block you like. I'll select this one. This block fits perfectly as it contains the activity name, time period, speaker's name, and the description. The only thing I need to do here is to change the text. Two more activities are planned after the break. In order to add more events, I open the content category and add another item. Each item represents one row and includes information about how long each event will last, the title of the event, the speaker info, and the event description. Now, let me add missing activities by duplicating previous items and modifying the contents. Once it's done, I save the changes. My schedule is almost ready. Some of the speaker's portraits are missing, so let's add them. I can upload images right here by clicking on the existing image and dropping the custom photo. Another image I will add from the content panel. I can simply drag the picture over the upload button. What I also want to do is to highlight the speaker's name. As I select the text, a control panel appears on top, allowing me to adjust the text. I want to make the speaker's names bold, so I click the bold button. The schedule is done. Let's move to the next block. I now want to create a registration form so people can sign up for the conference. I select a registration form block from the form and button category. I like this one a lot. Just above the form, I want to have a title explaining what this form is actually about. I browse the title category and add a nice title block. The blank space between the title and the form is customizable, and I want to modify it as it has to be slightly smaller than the space in between two separate sections of my website. I would also prefer if it equals the space used within the previous blocks. To alter it, you can simply hover over the edge of the block and drag it up and down. Okay, now I edit the title and the subtitle. And let's see how we can customize the form. I'll start from the content and modify the registration options. To register an attendee, I need to get their name, email address, and a phone number. Each input field, just like the items in the schedule block, is customizable. It is important to select the correct input type. Then I enter the input placeholder text to give a hint about the information to be placed in the field. I won't need the titles. The placeholder text is enough. There is a fourth input field which I don't need, so I click Delete. The form looks a bit better now. It is not as huge as before, yet some more improvements can be done. In the Settings panel, I check the box called Special Style for Inputs Fields, only bottom border, which makes my form look even nicer and cleaner. The next step is to modify the button, its color, size, and title. This can be done in the Content panel. I rename the button and save the changes. To make the button stand out on the page, I'll use a blue color accent. In the settings panel, I alter the background color of my button. I also edit the border radius to make the shape for my button rounded. And this is what the form looks like. Now, the next section should indicate the location of the event. For this, I will need a title, a subtitle, and map blocks. Let's start from the title block which will be followed by a map. Find it in the beginning of the other category list. You see the familiar Google Maps interface. Now let me customize the content. To add a location to your map, go to the Content panel, 
Then click the Geographical Point tab, name your location, and paste the latitude and longitude coordinates. You can find them in Google Maps by requesting GPS coordinates of an address. The last section on our website is the Contacts, where I'll indicate the organizer's phone number, email, and social media links. Let's select a block from the Contacts section. I want to keep the size of the email and the phone number rather big. This piece I won't need, so I delete it. Now I will add the hyperlinks to the social media icons. To do this, I click Content, open the Social Networks Links tab, and add the corresponding URLs just like we did for the buttons. Changes are saved. The very last thing to do is to customize the background color for the social media icons. Great! Let's have a look at what we have just created. I open a preview in a new tab. All the blocks are there. The content is correct, yet I have a feeling that something is missing. I want the website to look a bit more unified. How to do this? By modifying the background colors of the blocks, I can make them appear more structured. Let me use the light yellow color I selected in advance and apply it to some blocks. This block following the cover, let me change its background. This one needs to be modified as well. Let's keep the schedule block background white while two blocks making up the form section turn yellowish just like that. The maps block keeps its white background. The last block, however, doesn't. To see the preview, I just reload the page and all the changes are displayed now. Another useful thing to keep in mind is the spacing between blocks. Let me adjust it like that. Done. What if I want to change text font site-wide? To do this, I click the More button located at the upper right corner. Here, some website settings are listed. Let's select the Fonts tab. I can switch the fonts pairings. Let me apply this one. The page is reloaded automatically. The new font pairing is applied to all the blocks. If you want to apply more fonts or the listed font pairings doesn't fit well with the style of your website, go to Site Settings and select the Fonts and Colors tab. Here, you can once again switch between the font pairings or you can hit the Custom Settings button for the advanced settings, allowing you to assign different font families to the headlines and the body text. Besides, you can connect different services such as Adobe Fonts, Google Fonts, or upload your own custom fonts. Let's go back to the website editing and set up the registration form. To activate the registration form, we need to connect it to one of the data capture services. Let me explain how you can do it. First, go to Site Settings and open the Forms tab. You can find a variety of services to be connected. I'll go for the email solution. Here, I enter the email address which will be used to receive form submissions. I save it. Next step is to confirm your email. Let me do it quickly. All right, I have just confirmed my email address. As you can see, its status over here was updated. Let's check it again. I go to the content panel of the blog, and now my email is connected to the form, which means that every submission sent via this form will end up in my inbox. I save the changes. On top of my website, there is a button which is supposed to bring visitors to the registration form. How can I link it to the form? There is a special block called Anchor Link, which I need to add right above the form block. This block is located in the other category. Find it on top of the list. Now, in the content panel, I assign a name to this anchor. Let it be Form. Next step, I open the content panel of the cover. Then I paste the Anchor Link name in the button link field, along with the hashtag in front of it. I save the changes and reload the preview. 
Let's test the button. It works. You see, when I click it, I jump directly to the form. The thing is, as you might have noticed, the transition between the button and the anchor link is way too harsh. I can make it smoother by adding a block called Smooth Scroll to Local Anchor Link. It follows the anchor link block in the other category. I place it at the very bottom of my page, and the job is done. Let's see what has changed. I reload the preview, hit the button again, and the transition becomes smooth automatically. The next essential thing is to set up the custom URL for my website. To do this, let's open the site settings. Here in the main settings tab, I can connect the tilde subdomain, which means that my custom name will be followed by tilde.ws. Alternatively, you can connect a custom domain from the domain tab. Paste your domain name over here, then on the registrar's website where you have purchased your domain, enter the IP address pointing to tilde. Let's save the changes. Title and description help the website become social networks and SEO friendly. We can assign them in page settings. Now, when your website will be shared on social media, for example, this title and description will be displayed. Then, let's add a badge that stands for the thumbnail image, which is usually displayed next to the website name. I drop the image over the top of the button and save the changes. Let's publish our web page. You can access it either via the domain you have assigned or via the local link. Let me click it. This is what our page looks like. The speakers are presented. The conference program is published. The registration form is active. The event location is precisely indicated and the contact info is there for any other questions visitors might have. It took us less than an hour to make it, and the result is quite nice. Another nice thing about Tilda is that all the websites created on the platform are automatically responsive, which means that they adapt to all screens and look perfect on any device. From now on, you can create your own landing pages on Tilda. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and good luck.